Hello YouTube and welcome to an update video on Lordcraft and my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to leave the talk about the YouTube channel to the end because I suspect you'll hear about Lordcraft because it's more popular than my channel is, so yeah. So the update that's on its way is update 1.3 and it's hopefully going to be the first of the full releases of Lordcraft and probably about time, I mean I haven't released a version in a long time for Lordcraft. Um, I make Craft had been the center of my attention, but I'm moving back into Lordcraft now. So, talking about 1.3. So, one of the new changes in 1.3, if anyone remembers, they have the Book of Knowledge, and in Creative Mode, obviously, all the research is unlocked, so you don't need to worry about it. But you've got this big research tree to work through. Um, it's pretty big. And you will need to do all this research at some point. And you can do that, obviously, with your uh, what's it, the inscriber and researching table, uh, but it takes a really long time. So if, say, a mod pack author felt that they wanted to give you a recipe that, if completed, would unlock all the research for you, they can now do that with this thing, the Cave Master's Book of Knowledge. So when you activate this thing, if I can switch it to survival mode here, and I right click with it, you'll see that it gives me a bunch of achievements uh, and it unlocks all of the research apart from these secondary choices here. These have not been unlocked and the reason why is because I feel like you as the player may wish to continue to choose one of them because obviously they are a permanent choice and you can't switch back once you've got it. But it unlocks everything else in the entire uh, game, including this new thing, Transmutation, which I'll talk about in a bit. So that is the Cave Master Book of Knowledge. Create a mode on the item, no recipe for it. Spawn it in, switch to survival, activate it, all the research is yours. That's the idea. And of course, if you've got a mod pack that specifically gives you recipes for that, then great, that's what it's there for, pretty much. So yeah, that is the, the uh, Cave Master Book of Knowledge new item. Now we move on to some even, even more interesting stuff, I believe. So the main part of this update is to do with these two blocks here, the scanning station and the Lordic altar. The uh, scanning station is pretty simple to make, just another star and an advanced researching table. The Lordic altar, just a Lordic altar, advanced arcane forge and a bunch of diamond blocks. Quite simple. Um, they do of course require some research to make. I don't know why any eye isn't showing me that. I will need to have a look into this because my mod pack's doing some weird stuff to me at the moment. But they both require this transmutation research to work with. So let's just uh, clear some grass away to show you these two blocks. So the scanning station and the Lordic altar. Now, a couple things are about to cha will change when I fully release this. Um, but at the moment, there is a pretty basic functionality with them. So. If I take my book of knowledge out and I link it to myself, so that it now has a tooltip on it saying open to link to self, and when it's linked to you, it'll say link to your research. And if it's with anyone else, it'll say link to another's research, etc. So that's the thing. So that's a nice quality of life improvement that I'm trying to set up there. So I put this in the scanning station here to this slot. Um, and you'll see that it has this little area here with these little arrow buttons. It don't do anything as far as you can tell at the moment. So I'm going to switch into creative mode and grab myself a couple of resources, some of this stuff. Just a bunch of it really. It's fine. Uh, I'm just going to grab a bunch of stuff because I'm sure I'll need it at some point. Three. Right, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so scanning station, all we have to do is just simply place an item into this slot here. So I'll do that, use cobblestone, and nothing will happen. I know. That's interesting. Sure what? What's going on? Okay, so the animation isn't working. This is a beta. Just saying. <laughs> Um, right, so basically what happens is you place items into the slot here, 
this bar would normally fill up, but it's not at the moment for some reason. And when it completes, it gets this nice little particle effect out here in the real world. A circle of particles come up, and this number increments. Now, if I let that run a couple times, uh, you will see that it will reach eventually the number 10. And the reason why it's the number 10 is because then is when it's most efficient. And you see, it won't do it anymore. It's not going up anymore after 10. So I'll take that out, take out my book of knowledge because I don't need that in there anymore. And now, just like you could in um, T -Sun Craft, you can pop it on top of your altar. Quite simple. And you can take it off holding the alternate effect and right clicking. So, yeah, same as T -Sun Craft, except obviously its purpose is a bit different and it looks a bit different as well because it's the, uh, the sort of working version of the same block. Because as you may remember, according to the law, everything that exists in Tison Craft existed here in Lordcraft because it's the past, except that these versions are slightly different functionally because they, uh, they work a bit better than they work as they're supposed to. So this thing, uh, you power it using a mana battery, which I will set up quickly. And I'm going to pick light because it's the most efficient, uh, alongside darkness, but you know, Pick light, because why not? So just charge it up with a bit of uh, light energy here. I think it takes... Yeah, there we go. Alright, that's cool. So just plot that up for now. Okay, so you may have noticed there's tooltips on items saying energy values. Now, quite a lot of stuff's got zero on it. The moment, because again, it's not the full release. But, um, so, and I've researched cobblestone, which means if I put a piece of cobblestone in there, so you'd eat the cobblestone and it will start producing energy, like so. Now let's say I wanted to make some stone, but well, you see I can't. Even holding secondary effect, which is how you do it, uh, it doesn't make cobblestone or stone. I can't put stone in either, because I haven't researched it yet. So if I take this book off and put it in there, and start researching stone. If I, put, if I only put one stone in, I'll try what happens. So stone's energy value is 1, okay? If I put a piece of stone in, 4.1. 4.2, 4.3, 4 4.4. Well, that's a bit odd because its energy value is just one. And I've already used 10 stone up to do that, but it's, it's not working. So if I try and pull things out, secondary effect doesn't work. I can pull cobbles down out fine. So what's, what's up? Well, what's up is I've only researched stone once, and that means it's only running at 10% efficiency. So if I put 10 cobblestone in, I've now got energy value of 10. Stone's energy value is 1. So now I can pull a piece of stone out because it requires 10 times as much energy to pull things out when it's only 10% efficient. It will also only produce 10% of the energy it should give normally. So that's a thing. This is my balancing mechanic of sorts. As well as the fact that the mana battery requires charge. Uh, will be charged up in order to power the altar. You can see that the charge uh, number there. When that eats down, it will start draining more energy out of this mana battery. So if I actually look here, you see it's pretty full at the moment, and that's because the uh, the mana battery consumed one of these extra light crystals in order to charge it, which is why I needed um, 17 rather than 16, because it already used up some energy to produce charge. So that's um, fully researched stone then, as soon as I can. Uh, nine, put nine stone in there, and that will be fully researched. So the reason why I say this is temporary is because in future this won't be a book of knowledge in here. Because the thing about this is that it stores an MBT tag for each of these item stacks here, which I can't pull out by the way, if you're wondering. Um, and because you can copy books, it kind of is a bit inconsistent with the researching system, because the researching system isn't stored on the book, whereas these items are. So if you were to have two books, say, and you research using one of them, the other one doesn't have access to that research, which is an inconsistency with the original uh, research mechanic. So that'll be a different item in the future that you cannot create copies of. Um, but I'll have to decide what that is eventually. Probably a runestone of some description that you'd write onto, I would think. Um, so that is that. There is one other thing that exists in this. So, the other 
main balancing mechanic is for higher value items. If I were to put some diamonds in here, right, what happens to the animation here? There's fire. Yep. And notice how it ate a diamond, but it didn't actually produce a result. This is where I wish the animation was working inside the GUI, but it's not. So if I put that diamond in, let's see. As you can see there, it produced fire and didn't actually add research, but it did consume the diamond. Now, the balance mechanic works in a way that there's a chance for higher value items to be consumed without you actually researching them. So as you can see there, I did had some successful research and the diamond was eventually done. Now, the higher the value of the item, the less chance it will succeed. There is a maximum, so there's a 90% chance of failure as a maximum cap on that. So the ridiculously high energy items such as like purple matter, for example, from Tison Craft, you know, those won't be impossible to research. They can still be researched. They'll just be very unlikely to do. So for example, if you wanted to get the re research for nether stars, there's a good chance you won't actually succeed and you'll lose that nether star by trying to research it. So you certainly want to be careful Oops. when you're doing that. Uh, just sort of a thought that you might want to keep. So I have successfully researched uh, diamonds fully, but you can see I used far more than 10 diamonds to do it. If I were to put nether stars in, you know, you know it's, it's not going to be very successful most of the time. I might get a few successes here and there, but the fire shows that it's definitely not working most of the time. So that's a thing. That is the balancing mechanic for the research system for um, transmutation. Now, the reason why I've added this is because I feel like alongside the need to have 10 of it researched, I feel like it adds a new layer of balance that means I can sort of be less balanced in other aspects. So, you know, using the altar or the transmutation table of old, it's a very slow process to get items. And I feel like having the researching station, uh, the scanning station, sorry, that's what it's called, along with the concepts of <laughs> the loss chance and the need to research entirely, will allow me to automate this process, at least partially. I suspect that with the ability to restrict users of uh, capabilities with the system, I suspect that it won't be as powerful as say an energy condenser from Kuvan Exchange or Prodigy or whatever, whatever it's called now. Um, and still has room to be quite usable in both formats. Of course I'll need to make the energy condenser or whatever I'm going to call it, probably not an energy condenser, but I'll probably call it the... Uh, I don't really know yet, I'll decide when I get around to it. but. The concept there is that it will be quite expensive, but it will be worth it in theory, because, you know, automated transmutation is, you know, you can't really, you, you can't sort of not have that, per se. Obviously, if that wasn't there, then it's fine, but with the knowledge that it exists in the pack, or in the mod in itself, it's something you want to go for, I suspect. Something that is both balanced but also extremely useful once you've got it. So it's going to be a situation where it's a really difficult thing to set up, but once you've got it, you're good to go. That's the idea. Uh, but of course it will also require charge from the mana battery, which will be another balancing mechanic out there, so that you, know, you have to keep that supplied with crystals in order to run it. And crystals don't have an EMC value or an energy value, or whatever. I, I'm going to call. I'm going to keep calling it EMC into the future, probably because that's how I introduced to this concept. So um, that balancing mechanic means that you won't be able to automate things properly because you'll need to charge it with crystals, which you can't create from nothing, from energy, in that sense. And we won't have things like energy collectors generating free power. Of course, cobblestone generators can still exist. That's fine. I'm not too bothered about cobblestone generators. I wasn't really that bothered by energy collectors either because I knew they were slower than cobblestone generators in general, but they're not going to be here. There is no source of free energy available to the user. So that is the transition system. And of course, um, as you can see here, 
you may think there's probably not enough space to fit as many items as you want, but that's what these arrows are for. So when you fill up this sort of page, as I refer to it, of items, you can then use these arrows to navigate between pages of items. Um, I mean, it's not really something you need to look through that much, I suspect, because realistically, all you need to know is that you've researched the item where you haven't, sort of thing. And it'll be clear that you haven't, because if you take something I haven't researched, and I put the book on there, rather than just doing that, yeah, I can't use it, I can't do anything with it at all. So, yeah, it's clear that it hasn't actually been researched. So, that's the thing. Um, so that is the transportation system as a whole. Uh, of course, it's very early stages of this, the first iteration. I don't know whether I'm going to have the automated version in this particular uh, update, but possibly in 1.4. 1.3, I think, is going to hold this system. I'm going to see how it goes with trialing it out and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll see. we'll see how it works out. So something else that I nearly forgot about was uh, the concept of energy on servers. So if anyone remembers, with TsonCraft, there was the ability to set energy values and have it be saved. So if I go Lord colon set energy, I'll go 1024, this nether quartz all, you'll see it now has an energy value. Uh, Lord. So you can save energy in just the same way that you did in Tson Craft, just with slightly different commands. Um, so this provide this acts as an override. So if you set it to a value, it will be that value no matter what. No recipes will replace it. It will stay that way. Okay, that is how it works. And of course, it works on single player and it works on servers. So if a server has it, a special energy value for an item, say Nether Quartz or in this case. If you don't have it on your client, it doesn't matter. You, the server will send you that data when you connect to it. This means that if you have, say, a list of servers, all different energy values for items, you can switch from one to the other without changing any of your configs, and you will see all the energy values that they have, which is a great system, and it really works. Compared to, um, I think it was a mod for a criminal exchange back in the day, 1.25, uh, where you could set energy values, but you needed to edit it on your client as well, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it happening because the client side would be incorrect. It would still work and all that, but you wouldn't be able to tell what the energy value was by just looking at the item. So that's a difference here, is that it does work. Um, yeah, and if you, s the set energy command, if you're on a client when you do it, it will set it for your client only. If you do it on the server, it will set it for the server, but not your client. However, obviously, the server will then send the client the data temporarily for it to be used on the server. And then the reload command basically just runs through all the recipes to make sure that if, say, a recipe exists for an item that didn't used to have a value for something, it will now generate all the values for the items that should be created from that item. That's how that works. So, and then obviously you got the remove energy override thing to just reset it back to zero or whatever it was before. So that's the thing. That is the uh, uh, transportation system and energy system. Pretty much fully explained as far as I could tell. So now we move on to the next stage of this update to the, the elemental weapons. These aren't finalized by any means, uh, but they are. So it's kind of hard to tell on this particular instance because I've got uh, Tson Craft installed. Um, but a couple of these weapons have a balancing mechanic in that they attack slower than other weapons, or faster in some cases. Uh, like this metal sword here attacks slower than the other ones, but it does more damage than the other ones. So we have the Blade of Ice, which applies a sl slowness effect to enemies when you hit them. Blade of Steam sets them on fire when you attack them. Blade of Plants, which poisons them when you attack them. Blade of Metal, which just does a lot of damage. Blade of Magma, which I believe is the Hellfire Sword, deals fire damage over a long period of time. And then we have the Dragonfire, which does it over a short period of time with high damage. And then we move on to the more interesting ones, the Air 
the air counterpart. So these two weapons are out of the air tree of um, research. There is the other blade and the self blade. Let's switch into survival mode here. So let us first try out the other blade, because this is actually the least interesting of the two, I would say. And all it does is it basically pushes mobs backwards. Now, it has sometimes exhibited a lifting effect of sorts, but it doesn't want to show it today, apparently. Now, these weapons don't do that much damage. They only do eight. It's a lot less than the other weapons, but they can attack a bit faster. Hard to tell. Because uh, obviously decent crafts are removing the new combat mechanics, at least in that regard. Um, so that's a thing, but there is the other blade, and then you have the self blade. Now this is probably my favorite one of them, uh, as you'll see in a moment for obvious reasons. All I have to do is right click with it and watch. Push me forward, and again. Now watch what happens if I just hold it down and then lift upwards. So as you can see, you can fly around with this sword, which is pretty cool. These are going to be pretty expensive, by the way, so don't worry about it being possibly overpowered. Um, so you're probably thinking, how am I going to land? Well, just like that, you know, just however I want. This sword prevents you from taking full damage while you're holding it in your hand, which is uh, quite useful, I would say. But it lets you fly around like crazy. And it's a uh, may not be the best of the weapons in actual like ability for fighting, but it certainly is the best utility, I would say. Definitely the best utility. The other ones are sort of just like they apply effects to their opponents, so not the most interesting. And then we have uh, light in the form of calm and corrupt, and then shadow and, and void for the dark tree. Now, I've kind of forgotten what, what these ones do, to be honest. Uh, but I think I might figure it out. So light, I think it applies a glowing effect to enemies. Yep, looks like it. This also applies a glowing effect. Now, I believe that the corrupt one deals withering damage to enemies as well. So this deals, this does wither damage to them. I believe shadow, shadow gives them blindness and slowness. And Void does a lot of damage, I believe. Well, not that much, but I think it withers them too. So it's quite similar to the um, Corruption Blade, where it withers the enemy. Um, so those are the cosmic weapons, as it were. Let's remove them. And now to talk about some of the just new items that exist. There is the uh, this item, which is going to be Soul. These are not finalized textures, by the way. Soul of Water, Soul of Earth, Fire, Air, Light and Darkness. They're not properly done yet, but they have a purpose. And they'll be to do with crafting these weapons, which I'll, I will talk about in another update video where we actually discuss those items. Um, so another thing that's been changed is... I don't know whether anyone's noticed yet, but there's a bit of a bug with, the, with some of the blocks in this mod. Namely, these inventories with more than one slot in them. If I were to, say, get some cobblestone, right, and put it in here. Now, you know there's a way of picking up items by holding down shift and double-clicking onto a duplicate item stack of, well, same type item stack, and it will move everything out of the inventory that is that kind. And for anyone who hasn't noticed, that hasn't actually been working properly with... I think any of my blocks, actually, to be honest. Um, but not anymore. It is now fixed. So I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about that, because it's been annoying me for a while, while playing with it in um, my survival worlds. And I've now found the solution to it. So that's pretty good. Uh, and the same happens here as well with this guy. Uh, you can pull him out here, too. That works fine. I don't know how... I've never actually tested this before. What happens when I do that? Pushes it into there, and then that can be put into there. Okay, because if you shift click from in here, it puts it into there. Um, so that's a thing. If there's something in there, so somewhere for it to go. As I say, as I've said before, this device is designed to be to make sense to a user with the shift clicking and stuff. So it shifts from here into here, 
Uh, though, of course, if there's something for it to go in there, then it will go into there first, then into here. That's the plan, anyway. So for anyone who's noticed already, there's a couple of items I've been ignoring up until now. Uh, they are elemental matter and purple matter. These are making their return in Lordcraft now. They look a bit different to what they do in Tsuncraft. Maybe not as high quality textures, and naturally because I'm going for 16 by 16 textures as opposed to, I think they were 32 by 32 at the time. Uh, but they're also a lot simpler than that anyway, regardless of whether I'm going at a smaller scale in that situation. These will be just as powerful as they were in Tsuncraft, if not more so, because I'm a better programmer now than I was when I first wrote them. And it means that I can make them do more complex things. Not only that, I feel like it fits in lore-wise for them to do more stuff in this version as well, because this is before the, the Dark Age of Magic, where most of the magic potential was lost, resulting in the... Uh, a lot of the items that exist in this mod not existing in Tsuncraft, as well as things degenerating to weaker forms such as the Lordic Altar and the, um, what is the other block that traveled over? Well, the Runestones, yeah. They've changed. I don't know what the other block is, but I can't remember. That's the lore behind them. So Purple Matter and Elemental Matter will be working a bit differently to how they do in Tsuncraft. They'll probably be about as expensive as they were before, maybe made slightly differently, probably to do with these items here, these souls, which again I will talk about once that is ready to be shown off, as it were. Um, so yeah, that pretty much concludes the uh, Lordcraft portion of this video, so for anyone who isn't here to hear about my YouTube channel, you can leave now, I guess. I don't know. But if you're staying for the YouTube channel talk, then cool. So, future of the channel. Well, you may have all noticed I haven't uploaded a video in quite a long time. Um, a very long time, I believe, in fact. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, probably about a month, I would say. And that was an Omega Craft video talking about the release of Omega Craft, which I must say I'm very happy with the state Omega Craft is in. A lot of people have accepted it, and particularly after the late recent update into 1.11, it's certainly grown in popularity. I would say download counts have increased rapidly, um, and I'm very happy about that. So the YouTube channel, of course, is not stopping uh, but there is a new series that is about to start probably I'll release the first episode today because I've been compiling them for a while now um, well not a while like a couple like maybe a week I've been building them up I just never got around to releasing them so the new series is more in Minecraft 5 now sorry to say that the old world of Minecraft ran into a couple of issues. I don't know how I always end up that being the case, but they, it happens. Um, though, of course, I, I kind of saw it coming because I was playing with an experimental mod pack at the time. I was hoping it would last a bit longer than it did, uh, but unfortunately it didn't get very far at all. I think I managed to go on for another, like, probably, like, maybe another two two-hour sessions after that last video that I uploaded, I would say which I managed to get the majority of the castle built, well, at least to a reasonable degree, before the server decided that it, it had enough. Uh, which means that we are now returning to the start again uh, with this new section of Omega 5, where we are playing with a less broken mod pack, as it were, so things are a little bit more stable and it should be a much better series, I think, regardless of any of that. Um, 
it's a bit different to how I would normally play because we're starting in a savanna biome, which is unusual for me. I normally go for a, like a mountain or something, like a taiga or extreme hills or something. But today, well, in that particular episode series thing, <laughs> we're doing quite different stuff. Um, and we're starting the mod pack off. I think the first mod I go into is Mega Craft, which is cool. So, we'll see. It's a bit different to anything else I've done. Uh, yeah, certainly a very different mod, the way it works, I would say. The first time I've played with online mods is a sort of main objective, I would say, because I've played with TSM Craft a little bit with the um, cave stage in the previous series, but that was basically it for my usage of TSM Craft in that, that series. Um, I probably would have used it more when I got to the later stages in the game, but um, I didn't, really. Uh, whereas Omega Craft I do use quite a bit to set up all my machines, etc. In this one. Like that. Like that though. So, yeah. It's a bit, bit different to previous series. And I'm, I'm happy that it's a bit different, and I'm happy that... I, I will have time to get them out because, again, I haven't uploaded things for a while. I've been doing a lot of preparation for this series, so I'm hoping very much so that the server will support me here and actually get this series to a place where it needs to be. Um, yeah, because I really want to keep going with it. Because. <laughs> just feel like I have not been very successful so far with things and I think it's about time that I managed to do something that was somewhat successful in that in that uh, regard so that series should last longer than most do on my channel um, what else was I gonna say I can't remember actually Anyway, so that that's that's going to be coming out later today, probably the first episode of that, possibly the second one as well. Um, I'll have to see how quickly I can get on with that. But I was planning on recording some straight after this, so I'll be continuing on with that fairly soon. So I think that pretty much finishes up this update video, talking about primarily Lordcraft and then a little bit about my channel here. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.